Hello and welcome to the Rent Facts uh, webcast. We're uh, very glad to uh, have taken time out of your busy schedule uh, to spend some time with us today. Uh, we are very excited. Um, we have our co-founder, uh, Scott Abbey, uh, who has several decades of experience in the business here. So uh, he'll definitely be able to uh, not only help us with the presentation, but also answer any questions that you may have. And if you have a question, please feel free to either um, use your um, GoToWebinar module there to ask a question by clicking the chat window and submitting your question, or um, at the very end, if you want to raise your hand by clicking the hand icon, then we will unmute your line and you can just verbalize your question instead of typing it out. So without any further ado, Scott, take it away. Thank you, Stephen. Well, hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for taking time out of your Friday to uh, chat about uh, properties you'll love. Uh, look, just a quick background. I've been in the property management business for 25 years. I've been assisting clients and building wealth through real estate. And one of the missions that we have in our practice is to help assist uh, clients understanding what kind of properties they want to buy. And so, with that said, I, I think everyone would agree that's that's on this uh, webcast that everyone has a different tolerance and a different goal, a tolerance for for risk and a different goal, and and so it's important that you understand what your risk tolerances are and what your goals are. And I will tell you that as a rule, as it relates to the financial return on investments, generally speaking, on paper, the higher the risk the greater the reward, or the less risk, the less reward. And the, the less risk means generally greater stability, uh, greater um, probability of long-term uh, income stream. And in developing the risk index through RITFAX, uh, we, we set out to try to provide a numeric value that could be used both in a metropolitan area and across the country so that you could use this as a point of comparison. And I'm, I'm, we're just going to use some examples here. We had, we had a lot of different people give us addresses, and the, the mission was give us the properties you love and the properties you hate. And of those, the majority of them followed the pattern that we would have expected to see, where the properties that were loved were those with the higher risk index number, and the properties that were hated were those with the lower risk index numbers. And it's, it's true of just about all the samples we have. There are a few exceptions, and we'll talk about those. But what's important is, is that you get some practice in understanding what works for you. And so what we suggest is that you take your portfolio of properties that you do currently have and run risk numbers or risk reports for those properties and get a sense of the pattern of number range that works for you. An example we have we have one of the examples we have here uh, is their 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 loved property is still in a what we would typically consider a fairly high risk area. Their hated is even in a higher risk. But what that tells me is that this individual uh, enjoys the benefits of the higher risk and the cash flow stream that that yields. And by using the risk index, you can compare properties that you're considering to purchase. And what I can tell you is that the higher the, the, the risk number, the less probability you're going to have for that hated status. Um, so it, it's, an, it's a valuable tool to help you first learn what is within your risk tolerance and your comfort zone as it relates to the properties and how they rate on this index. And then it's a valuable tool to help you screen the properties that you want to look and, and rule out the ones that fall below the comfort level. So in this case, this property, uh, this is uh, Dwayne's property, it looks to me like you have a risk index tolerance of not you don't like so much of around 23. On a national basis, that's 16. And so that allows you to look at the national number when comparing properties from city to city. And if your property that you're looking at falls below that 16 or at 16, you're probably not going to enjoy the outcomes that that property will statistically tend to bear out. Whereas the, the more desired property, 
which has a risk index of 27 for the local uh, region that you're comparing, if you stay in that range or slightly above, you will likely find similar cash flow attributes, but you won't as likely find that hated status from the experience. Now, this all goes without saying that you have to apply good, solid management rules on the properties that you, you acquire and that you put tenants in, that the tenant screening has to be uh, top drawer. Uh, the due diligence on the tenant screening has to be solid. The rent collection has to be solid. But given all those factors being equal, uh, you will should be able to predict accurately uh, properties that you will find loved versus hated using the risk index. The, uh, the more obvious examples we have, Doug has two properties, and both properties fall as we would have expected, a love index number of 41, and that's my sweet spot. I like to be at 41 to 65. Those uh, those numbers yield me in this market, Kansas City market, some of the best results I can find. So I like his love number of 41.6. His hated number is 26.63. So as you're looking at properties, it doesn't mean you can't consider a 35 or a, a, even a, a 30, but you want to start being cautious as you go below your loved 41.6. Those, as those numbers go down in value, the probability of hated status will begin to emerge as the numbers get lower and lower. And the, this this pattern that I've just described of Doug is 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 true of most of the examples that we have. Now we do have one that's interesting. And so I, I called Stephen on this to make sure we didn't enter this wrong. We had uh, Nathan who had entered properties, and his love property was a very high-risk area. And his hated property was a property that I would put right in the sweet spot of the best investment. So I don't know if perhaps, Nathan, you you enjoy the higher risk, better cash flow that yields from that. Or if there was an error made in, in labeling this, I do know that a lot of clients, uh, when they see when they get into the higher risk numbers, the yield that they return on the property is not to their expectations. Uh, a property with a 52 risk index, as is the case here, um, probably will not yield nearly as good of return as the property with the 21 index that he is claimed as loved. Now, I, I checked the, the uh, detailed risk report, and in the property that uh, you loved with the uh, 21, we, I saw very high crime and very poor education attributes. So, you know, if those elements are not impacting your tenant base, and if this is a, a pattern that works for you, then by all means, this can be used uh, in the same way. As the numbers go up in value on the risk index, you should probably expect a correlating reduction in cash flow. Now, it's not always the case, but it is a guide to help you. If if these numbers, if these have been mislabeled, then the, the, the more traditional expectation would apply to this. So I, I just use those examples as a, a means of helping the kind of explain what we see here. I believe that with the risk index, you can compare multiple properties after you've understood where your, where your hated and loved zones are from experience. Then you, when you go to seek new properties, running the risk report will help you identify those that will fall in the love category or more likely fall in the hated category and allow you to do your due diligence, particularly when you're looking at those numbers that fall in the hated range to make sure you understand exactly what you're buying, that you provide enough purchase margin in the deal to cover some additional risks and losses that will apply to those properties and help you make deals that make money. So I, I don't want to run on here too long. I want to give the audience, we have quite a few people in the audience, so I want to give the audience an opportunity to ask any questions they may have. So Stephen, I'll open that up to questions. Fantastic. And if you're wondering, uh, we not only are going to provide 
reports on the addresses that you provided. I will be emailing uh, those to you. We're also going to provide a promo code at the end of the webinar. I'm going to go ahead and email that to each of you as well. And you'll be able to redeem um, another report. Uh, we're going to go ahead and provide three free credits uh, for that. So we'll provide the reports that you um, submit the addresses for. And we will also provide uh, a promo code to redeem three credits. So we'll be getting both of those to you uh, shortly. So uh, if you have any questions, you can either uh, click the hand icon to uh, raise your hand, or uh, please feel free uh, to type your question uh, in the uh, chat window. So our first question, uh, this person says, uh, I enjoyed the risk score. Where would I be able to find um, the report section to go ahead and purchase a report on your website? That's a good question. You just go to the home page and uh, you log, you you'll create a login, and there, once you have purchased credits, uh, there's a, a place for you to enter an address. And there's two types of risk reports: there's a summary report and a detailed report. My general first pass is to take the summary report because it gives me a, a high level, low cost number. If I'm querying of greater depth. Uh, and, and, and this is one thing I did in one of these reports that I looked at. I went ahead and pulled the, the, the detailed report because I wanted to see what was causing, what were, what were the influences that was causing the risk. And that detailed report will give you greater insight in terms of the crime, economy, uh, housing. What are the issues that are driving those issues down? And, um, and then the other thing I want to remind you is that in addition to when you run either of the, the risk summary or the risk detail, you can then click to maps. And the map will highlight the area, the, the demographic area that's being reviewed. And you can see on the map where that fits. And what I did on one of the reports is I actually clicked on an address next to the, the subject house because I wanted to see the adjacent uh, demographic to see how the risk index uh, ref was reflected there. And in that, I found that the risk index was identical. So it, it's, again, it's helpful. If, you're, if your subject property is at the edge of a demographic, it's sometimes wise to consider looking at the other demographic adjacent to it by simply clicking on a report, running a summary report, and it'll tell you the risk index for that demographic adjacent to it. And that's helpful, particularly if there's large disparity between the two, which is can be found in many many places where you have a you'll have a 50 and then a 30 side by side. And what you want to consider is is there's some bleed over of impact of the demographics as on the borders in particular. Okay, next question. This person says, is it very common for the property you hate? to score higher than the property you love? It depends on your, on your objectives, your financial objectives. Uh, if, if you really love cash flow, then the answer is no. It's not uncommon to see a, a property you love that generates high cash flow uh, have a lower number than the properties that you, uh, that you hate. Um, because, again, it depends on the individual investor's objectives. Now, it, it, w in my practice, we typically tend to preach a, a conservative investment approach. And in the, when using a conservative investment approach, I have rarely found that a low number trumps a high number in terms of love-hate. Again, it's all about what your risk tolerances are and what your risks, uh, what your, what your get cash flow objectives are. Hope that answers it. Got one more question here. This person says, what is the magic number for me to accept a property to manage or to not? That is a great question, and I wished I could give you a silver bullet answer to it, but there isn't. Um, I can tell you that for my practice, we, we have two different property management agreements and I use a high risk, I call it a high risk agreement and a lower risk agreement. And the number I use is 35. Anything below 35, I score as high risk and I charge a greater premium for the, for the effort because to manage 
higher risk properties with lower numbers requires a greater bandwidth of the management effort. And so it's critical for a, either the investor who's hiring a manager or the manager himself to recognize that to manage well in higher risk areas requires greater energy. And from a management, from a manager's perspective, that uh, means you have to charge more. Each market is a little bit different. And again, as a manager or an investor, your tolerance for risk and effort uh, varies. Uh, but I think 35 is a really good number to consider. I will also tell you, and, and this will, you'll find this as you use this tool more, the demographic that we're looking at is the smallest measurable demographic that's available to us in terms of data acquisition. But even within those small demographics, there are micro neighborhoods. And so you can have a lower risk neighborhood that has a micro, very positive street or a series of streets. And classic examples of that are properties that are adjacent to schools, properties that are adjacent to churches, properties that are adjacent to uh, uh, commercial areas that are um, highly used and lots of security in those areas. So it, it, even in a low risk area, you can find uh, higher better results because of the, the immediate proximity of development around the subject property. Hope that helps. Fantastic. That looks like all the questions we have for today. And again, if you uh, have any questions, you could either um, raise your hand now, type in a question now, uh, just for the next few moments, or if you have a question offline, please feel free to email us at support at redfaxpro. Dot com. Again, that is support at redfaxpro.com. We will be emailing each of you a report on the addresses you provided, and I will also be emailing you shortly a promo code to use uh, to redeem three free credits uh, to run um, a report um, on any uh, other properties you would like. Thank you again for your time. We do appreciate you uh, joining us on today's uh, webcast. Uh, Scott, any final words? No, I, I am happy. we're happy to answer any questions. If you have a specific issue that you'd like to chat about, uh, let us know. We'll be glad to reach out to you and talk to you about it, see how you can use this, this tool to help you benefit in your, in your investing or your management of property. We'd be delighted to help you with that. I wish you best investing. Fantastic. Thank you all again for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to support at rentfaxpro.com. Well, until next time, talk soon. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.